Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing another tier list, obviously, and Belgium is up next. And this is actually one that I'm really interested about just doing because Belgium is, to be honest, maybe one of my favorite countries in Eurovision. Um, but it's such a weird one because they've had so many ups and downs throughout the years. Belgium also, to be honest, is one of my favorite countries in real life. I love going to Belgium, so uh, I'll, I'll give a little bit of a shout out there to to one of my favorite countries. Uh, and it just works so well for them then to also be good at Eurovision. It just makes me happy, that whole concept of, of that. Um, but of course, Belgium has also participated in Eurovision for a very long time. They were in when Eurovision debuted, or like when it all began in 1956. So, as with the Austria video, I've kind of narrowed it down. We're going to go from 1993 to 2022, the songs that they've sent throughout those years. And it's going to be a long one because there's a lot of songs. So I've stacked up on energy drink as usual uh, because I will need it. You'll have to excuse me drinking throughout the video, but <clears throat> my voice is going. And uh, because I've talked so much lately when making these videos, um, we're just going to get right into it. We're going to rank Belgian songs today. And we're going to start with Miss Barbara Dix down here in 1993. Um, this is not for me. It's a very slow ballad, very uninteresting, I think. Um, has kind of got a bad rap because of the like the Barbara Dix award with the clothing. I couldn't care less, to be honest. I don't really mind clothing in Eurovision. I'm there for the music. Um, but this song is way too uninspiring. It doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't have a progression. It doesn't have an evolution in it. Um, just ponders on, and I've forgotten about it the second that it's over. So I, I can't put it higher than this. It's simply not for me. Um, we're gonna move on right away. <laughs> 1995, though, La Voix, La Voix le Libre, La Voix est Libre, <laughs> something like that. I, the French titles, they always get me. But 1995, of course, 1995 is such an amazing year uh, that some songs fall through the cracks a little bit. I do think that this is a pretty solid effort, though. Um, yeah, this song has qualities in it. I like the chorus of it. I think the melody there is really strong. I also think it's well performed. I like just looking at this group of people on stage. I think they're really, like, they don't do anything in particular, but I just like looking at it because it's, it's very nicely set out. And it's one of those songs where you feel the kind of unity of a band really just shine through. And I really do think that this one shows that. Uh, I think it's well sung with, by both lead vocal and the backing vocalists. And I also just, yeah, as I said, I like the chorus of it. I think the melody there is really strong. Um, yeah, it's just it's just enjoyable for me. I, I sit there and I go through the three minutes. I don't think about this song as one of the best when it's done. But I enjoy the three minutes that it goes on for. And I probably wouldn't skip it, uh, you know, at, at many points. Especially not if I'm watching it live as well. Uh, so I'll have to put it here. It's a solid effort from Belgium. In 1996, they went completely upbeat uh, and also were behind the song that Sweden were going to steal five years later, pretty much. Uh, the melody, at least. <laughs> um, but yeah, 1996, this is upbeat. It's catchy. It's fun. But is it really for me? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't really get that enjoyment from the song. It's it's pretty weird because I, I do think that it's a catchy, upbeat number. Um, yeah, it's solid, in all honesty. I, I was about to put it in I like it, but... Yeah, I'm gonna... Ah. Uh, it's just not really that I'm too into it. I probably wouldn't set out to listen to this song like I would with the 95. But yeah, let's put it in solid. Let's be kind today. Um, sometimes I can be nice. Yeah, it's a it's a catchy song. It's fun. It's it's energetic and it's very harmless. So, yeah, solid effort from Belgium here. Uh, ninety eight. They kind of step. Oh yeah, ninety seven. They missed out then, or is this from ninety? I'm getting confused with the years here. They missed out at some point here during the nineties. I've noticed because ninety eight they sent D we. I <laughs> maybe they maybe pronounce it like that. Um, this is very pleasant. I think it's really great. Uh, well staged. It's just such a pleasant song to listen to. It's it's very calm. It's very. It's also quite upbeat at the same time. 
just a great backing track in all honesty and i'm liking the hook um and there's also like this chord change in the middle of the chorus here that i i'm quite fond of how it moves up uh in the register really just pleasant song i wouldn't go as far and say that it's a fantastic one it's just really really pleasant and really enjoyable so I, i'll have to put it in really great um and they followed it up with like the wind this is also a really great one to be honest um really sets the tone of its own thing it's very authentic in that sense and it it's very what do you say like i just like the whole concept of this song and and the setting that it creates it's really well flowing and like these dragged out string parts in the choruses it's very nice and especially with the i don't remember what type of like but it's some type of woodwind like a flute or something that's like the main instrument here and i really like that uh, and i also like the vocal melody throughout it's a bit slow in the verses but it, it's fine still i just love the the whole uh, atmosphere that it has to be honest uh, so it's a really great entry from Belgium, I really do think so. And then uh, what happened next? Uh, 2000, this is just just no, just no. It's so underwhelming in every aspect. It's poorly performed. It's, it's not a song that has any redeeming qualities whatsoever. It's just a what happened here. Uh, I would never, ever, ever set out to listen to this song because it's just one of the most uninteresting things i've heard um and it's also quite poorly performed so I, I i just can't get behind this one no what happened here you were on such a good run in all honesty and then that happened uh and then <laughs> they missed out in 2001 of course because this finished did it finish last maybe it finished last um 2002 they came back with sister come and move your body uh what a fun performance, all honesty. Um, it's a great performance. The song is... Eh. It, it's catchy, but it's also not really that... That out... Like, that exceptional in any area, to be honest. Uh, what's more out of the ordinary is just the performance and... Oh, I've forgotten his name, but he's kind of iconic because he just, like, backflips on stage. It's really cool, actually. Uh, and I'm liking the incorporation of the backing vocalist, but I think this is solid. Um, the song isn't really quite there. I don't think it's that remarkable. And yeah, just a solid effort from Belgium. But yeah, that's all it is to it. Oh my. Where do I begin? I'm going to be pretty brief, but Sanumi, it's one of my favorite songs of all time in Eurovision, all honesty. The world building, that's that's where we're gonna start. I have a like I notice a pattern that usually when songs that I really really love, the world building is what really sets them apart. Um, because this is like, do you say like what do you say transcendental? Is that a word? It is a word, but I don't. I hope I use it correctly. It's one of these songs that just take you into this world that they're building here for three minutes. Uh, the made up language I guess adds a layer to it, but I think what really just creates that atmosphere is the instrumental and the arrangement and the instrumentation, I guess, along with just how haunting the vocal harmonization uh, is. And the melodies are so great. Uh, I just love the opening of this, like the melody that they have here, the main melody of the song is so memorable and so just hard hitting because it's played on this, uh, like it's played in various instruments throughout the song, uh, as well as used by the vocal. It just works so well. And I like also the stage layout, really incredible, uh, but the song really just, uh, as well, like, <laughs> you just think it has, like, this constant drum machine that isn't very interesting, but it just works in this setting. I really do think so. No complaints can be given anywhere to this song from my side. I think it's perfection. I really do. Oh, I feel so passionately about this one. I, I love it to bits. I really do. They follow that up with uh, One Life. This is a really upbeat one and also has a very, like, characteristic tone to it. I think it sets itself apart. It's very upbeat. It's very enjoyable. I'm liking the club-like inspired hook of it. Um, do I think that it's really great, though? No, I don't. I think it's solid. Uh, it's a solid effort. 
and I'm, I'm, I always enjoy it. When I, when I sit there and I sit there for three minutes and I watch this, I enjoy it. But maybe I wouldn't really set it apart later. The only reason I would watch it again would be because if I watch like 2004 and I'm in a 2004 mood, this is by far one of the better songs, <laughs> but it's just because the competition is kind of weak that year. Uh, solid effort from Belgium, not something I would write home about, in all honesty. Uh, and the same thing kind of goes for 2005. This is a very pretty ballad, very easily forgotten, I think. Um, I don't remember the title of it, but it's really well performed. I think he's a great vocalist. I think the song has so many redeeming qualities in it. It's very well written. It has this classical approach, which I'm really fond of. But at the same time, I also realize that when it's over, it doesn't really leave that impression that it really wants to, because it tries to be very grand and effective towards the end but still when the song has ended you can't really just latch onto it like you kind of want to maybe um so it'll end up in solid here but still good effort um we're almost halfway there i think 2006 jetador by kate ryan classic really is uh, well performed, I love the performance of it, it's very professionally put together. Song is catchy, but the song is also not super memorable, I think. It's a solid effort. Uh, I really don't think I can put it any higher than that, because I, I don't think the song has that much more to offer uh, than the other songs in this category. So I'll just have to put it there, even though I love the performance, I really do. Uh, 2007. This is when Belgium started being, well, what Belgium was during this period. Love Power is a great what happened here. I have no idea who thought this was a good idea. It sounds awful. It's this really outdated and cheesy and disco sound that no one really actually likes. Uh, combine that with this awful, awful falsetto voice that he's doing in the Can You Feel the Love Power segments of the of the song where he drags out the notes, it sounds quite, quite bad. Ujulisi, what happened there? I have no idea. This is, this is just so off-putting in so many ways. It tr tries to be really charming and inviting in its, in its weirdness, I guess, and it tries to be, you know, very traditionally inspired. It's, no, I, uh, I get embarrassed on their behalf watching this and listening to this. I'm sorry. Just doesn't work. And Mr. Copycat can go in this category as well. Like, look at what is Belgium doing in this period? 2007, 8, and 9 is just the most tragic trio of songs that a country must have ever sent. I really do think so. Copycat is despicable, uh, tries to be really funny. There's this, like, fat cat in a suit, I think, behind him on the screens. I, I, I don't even know uh, tries to be charming, tries to be funny, is neither, uh, hate it, really do. These four songs down here, it's just, oh, Belgium, what are you doing? And then 2010 comes, fantastic, me and my guitar, it's such a, per like, you can really feel the personality behind this song, uh, very well written, it's not, like, extraordinary in terms of its songwriting, like, chord-wise or melody-wise, but it's, just like a perfect singer-songwriter song, to be honest. It's personally written, it has a great sound to it, like the instrumentation is really solid. I'm loving this, the, the sound of the guitar, and it just really works with this mellow atmosphere that it creates. And the song also progresses really nicely throughout. And I think the chorus is very, um, what do you say, like, like not, maybe not hard-hitting, but the chorus is very memorable and palpable in its, in its delivery, I really do think so. And I think it's a it's a fantastic performance. It really is. It's so personal. I get dragged into it every time. I love I love watching it, uh, and I love listening to the song as well. Has to be up here. And then with love, baby comes on. Uh, I know this one divides opinions as well. A lot of people would probably put it down here next to copycat and the others, but no, the creativity of this is way too great. Uh, I think this is really great. Um, and I know that could be controversial, but it's just the enjoyment that I get from uh, listening and especially watching this performance, I think, it's just something else. 
you you don't really get that many songs like this and whenever you do get them i still think like they're too charming not to just get dragged into the like into liking them uh at least for me i really do think this is something else and i really like the whole chemistry on stage i like the combination of vocal melodies all over the place it it's a bit messy but it also feels like a like a structured mess it's it's a uh, there's still cohesion in it, and there's still a purpose within it. Uh, so I, I, I think this is really great. I honestly do. Uh, oh, yeah. This has been... I think this has been voted as the most forgettable song of Eurovision history or something like that. Belgium 2012. Not for me. I, I can't be harsh enough to put it in what happened here, because it's not, it's not a bad song. It's just so forgettable and so anonymous. It doesn't ever have an evolution. It doesn't really have much dynamic or instrumental variation or even a melody that you would remember. Um, it's just one of those songs. It, it goes in from one, through one ear and goes out the, the other the second that it's over. Um, it's unfortunate because some somewhere in behind here, maybe there's something. It's done with a purpose, of course it is, but it's it still just hasn't really been. It doesn't showcase. It doesn't come across at all. Uh, it's a shame. Not for me. And then love kills comes. This is really great. Um, this has such a great hook. I really do think so. Uh, also very well performed. I like the the synchronized dancing behind him, uh, and also like the lyrics scrolling on on the screens behind him. And he's very solid vocally as well. And I think the main selling point is just how, like how just great everything is written in this song. There there's nothing out of the ordinary or extraordinary about the song. It's just a well written pop song with a great hook, uh, and you really can't falter anything about that. Um, yeah, just great. Really, really great. And then 2014 comes along with Mother. Uh, oh, this one is so tough for me. I'm one of these people who think there's a pretty good song uh, behind here. I think it's very emotionally loaded. And I think a lot of people think that it's very over the top, and that's completely fine. Uh, and when you see it live, it becomes overbearing a bit with the over the top aspect. Back in 2014, I actually really enjoyed watching the performance as well. But the more times you've seen it, like later on, the more I just kind of get turned off by it. And I'll have to put it here because I do like the song that is here behind somewhere. It It's very emotionally loaded. It's kind of well written as well. I do think so. But it just kind of becomes too much when you see it live. It's It tries to be so much more than it actually is. Maybe a more restrained approach would have been greater here i don't know i still like the concept of it but it becomes a little bit overbearing yeah i do think so uh next up is 2015 rhythm inside i'm tempted i am very very tempted and i'm gonna do it among the greatest every time i watch this performance i'm like i'm glued to the screen for the whole three minutes the song is so dynamically engaging as well it's a fantastic song. It really is. Um, so well written. It's very minimalistic in its in its approach. And I like kind of like how the song doesn't have that much substance to it. It's basically only synth and very distinct percussion. But it's also such well-polished production. Uh, like the production of it. The percussion is so distinct and very... Offers like a great dynamic to it. And the synths are very growly and just wide and big. <laughs> uh, it just works so well. And then in the middle of everything, you have one of the greatest vocal performances um, from the last few years, I guess, in Eurovision. He's so fantastic vocally. There's so much passion being put into it. And the hook is so memorable. And I also kind of just... Like, the verses offer such a contrast to the chorus as well, because the chorus is so kind of shouty in a good way. Uh, and the verses are very suspenseful. And uh, until they kind of go into the sections where he moves up the register and really just um, offer like adds adds more attitude to the vocal performance. It's such a such an interesting piece of music. I really do think so, uh, and I'm just really hooked by it every time I watch it and every time I listen to it. It's such an enjoyable experience. I really do think it's among the greatest. Uh, it's not Sanomi great, but it's really really damn great. 
Then we have What's the Pressure. This is a fun performance, it really is. Uh, the song I'm not overly fond of, it's kind of not my type of music, I guess, but it's so well performed. You just kind of have to admire it. I love the little dance for it, like the choreographies and everything. Uh, I never really set out to listen to the song, even though I like that little snappy uh, bass line that they have in the verses and how that's layered with the guitar as well. It's very Another One Bites the Dust, I guess, in a sense, or uh, Need You Tonight by NXS. But like the chorus may be, be the weakest part of the song, in my opinion, but I, I get that that's the point every like that's the section that everyone remembers. Uh, mostly, I just remember the performance, though. Um, I think it's really great. I, re I really do think so. The, the performance just elevates it. The song is solid on its own, but the performance just makes it something else. I really do think so. And then 2017, we have City Lights. This is a very well-written song. It's a very well-produced song. Um, I just can't seem to really latch onto it as much as I know other people do. Um, when I watch it live, I don't get that complete tangible atmosphere that a lot of people get from it. Um, and it's a shame because I, I really do... I really do like the song on its own, and I, every time, ever since I first heard it, I was just like, this is perfectly written. It's, it doesn't have to be more than this. The song doesn't do anything uh, explosive or grand or tries to be something that it isn't. It's just well-written, well-flowing, and does exactly what it wants to do. But whenever I see it live, I just kind of don't get that investment into it. And I think that's a shame, because I really want to feel that. But I just don't. And I'm, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you, because that's just how I feel. It's really great for me. Yeah. Uh, it, it's way greater than, <laughs> than With Love Baby. Of course it is. But I don't think it's fantastic, because I personally don't get that subjective appeal of it that it really strikes. Like a Me and My Guitar does. But it's such a great song. It's so difficult for me. You know what? We're going to put it up here. I'm doing it. Uh, scratch everything I said. Even though I feel a little bit of like coldness from, from watching it, the song is too good. It really is. No, it's fantastic. I changed my mind. Another song that is definitely fantastic is A Matter of Time. But then we see it live and it becomes only really great. This is... This is such a great song. It's it's such a shame because it's so well written. I love the chords of it. I love the suspenseful atmosphere of it and the whole mood. It sets itself apart from other songs so well. And then the performance is so flat. It feels very cold. It's quite poor choice of camera angles, quite a poor choice of lighting as well. Uh, should have definitely incorporated more of the lighting that they had from the music video. It felt more mysterious, more suspenseful. And also the vocal delivery live doesn't really match the ambitions of the song. Because the song has so much in it that it's just mind-blowingly great. Ah, uh, it's a shame. I love this song to bits, I really do. I can listen to it anytime and just be completely in love with it. But I can't watch the performance without getting a little bit frustrated. It's a shame. Uh, then, I don't really remember what this song was called, but it's from 2019. Uh, a pretty decent song, in all honesty. I like the verses of it a lot. I think the, the synth work and the instrumental approach in the verses is very strong. The chorus, I don't really like that much. I think it's a pretty weak chorus. Uh, it tries to be a bit... What do you say? Uh, maybe a little bit emotionally loaded and also a bit dramatic. But it kind of falls flat because it's not very, it's not very driving or hard-hitting, I think. Uh, and then the performance comes and just kind of kills it. It's quite poorly sung and poorly performed live, and I, I'll i have to put it in I like it, but... Because there's a lot of just aspects that kind of drag it down a little bit for me. I think the verses are the strong points of the song, but it loses it a little bit. Uh, I really do think so. Then we have Release Me, the first Hoover Phonics song. I like the classical approach that this one has took. That this one took. Um, it's a bit slowly, it's like slow moving forward. But I still like the whole string arrangement, and I like how it progresses towards the end of the song. It's a very nice progression. However, I just never set out to listen to this song, which is a shame. 
Uh, I'll have to put it in solid because I don't think it's as great as the songs I've put above it. Um, but it's a solid effort. It's well done. Everything about it is well done. It just doesn't leave that impression of me wanting to listen to it over and over again. It, I guess that's not the intent, um, but it, I still kind of need some something to latch onto that makes me want to hear it again. And I can't really find that in this song, which is a bit of a shame, uh, because I think it's very well written. Uh, I think the song that they came back with the year after is equally well written, but it has more of that memorable quality to it. I really do think so. And I'm liking the playfulness of dynamics in this song way more than in the previous one, because the previous one doesn't really have that. This is a completely different approach, of course. It's a different type of music, but I can I can latch on to this one way more. And I think The Wrong Place is really great. Um, I'm not a big fan of the massive faces on the screens behind it when you watch the performance, but I like the lighting and I like the setting of the tone. Like the the, the mood of everything here is very... Very uh, palpable, I think. Really great entry. And we're going to end with a... Yeah, another really great entry. Um, Miss You is such a cool song. I really do think so. Uh, love the opening with the like really dramatic and suspenseful tone with, with the vocal being so central. And then the switch up to this more R&B... Um, like the hip hop inspired drum beats and the playfulness of the of the like the uh, drumming arrangement and the whole percussion and the whole arrangement of the song is really quite playful, which I just love. Um, and also seeing it on stage, I wasn't really that disappointed. Uh, in the semi final, I was to be honest. I I didn't think it was that great. He looked very nervous. It it just came across on, on the screen that you you couldn't really get along with it. Um, but in the final, I really do think that everything just clicked for this one. And it was a very strong performance, I believe. Uh, and I'm liking like the whole choreography of everything as well. Uh, a bit disappointed with the lighting choices. I liked the yellow and black thing they had in the music video, but it's, it's fine. Nitbits, you know? Uh, but yeah, really great entry from Belgium, this one, I think. Uh, I think it's among the stronger as well in this category, uh, just because of the fact that it was better performed in the final, because I think the song is uh, among the fantastic tier. I really do think so. It's one of the songs that I definitely listen to a lot of the times. I know the long high note can be grating for some ears, but for me, I just, it drags me in. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> I'm weird like that, I guess. Uh, but yeah, Belgium has a lot of entries here that can divide a lot of opinions, I guess. So do tell me how much you would change from my list if there's a lot or if there's maybe not that much. Uh, do tell me anything you want to tell me. I always want to read as many comments as possible. So even though you have nothing of value to say, do leave a comment because it's fun for me to read them. <laughs> uh, I hope to see you in the next one uh, where, yeah, I'm not going to forget, Bosnia and Herzegovina is next. That's right. So uh, looking forward to seeing you in that one. I like Bosnia and Herzegovina and Eurovision a lot. So uh I'm excited for that one. Uh, take care of yourselves until then, though, and uh, hope to see you in that one. Bye-bye.